Guilty until proven innocent criminal psychology. With respect to interrogation analysis, it's no secret the benefit of hindsight gives you a considerable advantage when evaluating information. When you know a subject is guilty, it allows you to exclusively look for guilty behavior. The knowledge of outcome highlights the imperatives while stripping away non-essentials, and this allows you to calculate certain things that would otherwise be overlooked by cause of your own doubt. Hindsight hmm. is 2020. Everyone True. is well aware of this aphorism, and what's fascinating is that it not only applies, but is far more compatible to the innocent than it is to the guilty. The reason for this is because the information you have to scrutinize is reduced when dealing with innocent subjects. When you remove the versatile factors of misdirection and trickery, you're left with relatively straightforward behavior in comparison. Mm. Of course, the argument that everyone is different and can react in a different manner has merit. Human beings are unique, and there will always be exceptions to every rule, especially when you take into consideration that trauma can cause atypical behavior. Yet, atypical behavior and guilty behavior are generally distinguished from each other with relative ease. And that brings us to example number one, 37-year-old Michael Dixon. Described by his peers as popular, friendly, but also unassuming and reserved. A self-professed <laughs> introvert who turned down a job as a trade show presenter due to his fear of public speaking, and kept his position as a trade show assembler instead. On August 15, 2003, in Hamilton, Ontario, nice police were called show. to report a man breaking into Nothing wrong with self -defense. To a jewelry store. Two officers responded and chased the call to report a man breaking into a jewelry store. Two officers responded and chased the perpetrator from the store down an alley before momentarily losing sight of them. At the same time, Michael Dixon was getting off a bus nearby coming home from work. He was the first person the police saw when coming out of the alley and was then arrested at gunpoint. Dixon voiced his innocence but didn't resist arrest and stated he would help in any way he could. He was taken to the Hamilton police station and questioned two hours after his arrest. Damn. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Michael. That's okay. One could advocate this as a common policing misstep if it weren't for the suspect being described as a small white man in the 911 call. As well as not being white, Dixon is six foot three. This detective has either forgotten standard procedure to review the call to dispatch or for some reason decided to reject it as evidence altogether. Damn. Michael is informed Racial the bias, room is maybe? being recorded and then read his rights. He asserts he is willing to speak with a detective and help with the investigation. Okay. Um, why we're here is because earlier tonight you were arrested for breaking out to a jewelry store on John Street South. Um, now, the, your innocence and guilt in this, quite frankly, uh, isn't an issue. Uh, the evidence I have is fr frankly conclusive and overwhelming. Okay? Um, so I'm not even going to ask you if you did it. What, I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. He's just trying to get him to confess, what, right? What, what I have to ascertain. The subject maintains a forward leaning posture and keeps his eyes both in contact and on the He's same level as the detectives. Early. He displays self-confidence and poise, while it's the detective, in fact, who gives off a nervous disposition. What Michael just did is known as a non-verbal challenge in forensic psychology. So let's break it down into components. What am I, what, what I... In the next moment, the detective will shift in his seat to adjust his position, and at the same time break eye contact to look somewhere in this direction. Michael's exaggerated head movement that follows oh, isn't wow, for the I purpose like this stuff, of maintaining yeah. eye contact. He could maintain it while keeping his head perfectly still. reading human still. behavior. It is in fact to let the detective know he is maintaining eye contact. It's a way of asserting dominance in the exchange. He is telling yeah, the detective confident, yeah. that he is the more confident person in the room at that moment. What I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. Okay. Um, whether, whether this is just right off the bat, just wherever this is gonna go, he's very calm. For a guy, it, he knows that he's been wrongly accused. The detective comes in with full confidence, and he's chill. I wonder how you read that. They'll probably talk about it, but you're like a serial burglar, and this is what you're doing all the time, or whether this is a, a one-off thing because of the power cut. And it's early too. It's early in the morning. That's, that's ladies probably tired. Um, 
okay, I understand your position. Like I yeah. say here, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and you've heard that a million times, I'm sure, in your career, but it's just, <laughs> ask me questions, that's all I can do is answer them, I guess. I've got no questions to ask you, I mean, why, why did well, you do it? That's, that's basically, yeah, that's, that's my only question. But coming from that position, and, I'm, and since I'm saying I didn't do it, I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. Well, I guess we haven't really got a... Really, a, a great amount of talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an up for the discussion. Okay, well, um, it, it's really not. You've no doubt come to notice how incredibly tolerant Michael is yeah. over the unjustness of the situation. It's the most unusual thing about his behavior, and perhaps what makes him an anomaly with respect to innocent subjects. So before moving on to the second phase of this interrogation, we'll show you a more common response from an innocent subject facing similar yes, charges. This is 26-year-old Justin falsely accused of breaking and entering, first-degree theft, and assault. He was arrested at his home and only read his rights to silence on the way to the police station. The footage will begin before the subject knows what exactly he is being charged with. In his mind, he knows he has done nothing wrong, and at this point is unaware he is about That's to be, be wrongfully so imprisoned for just over two years. Oh, God. How infuriating must that be? I think would be really sad and shocked to know how much or how often this shit happens you know what i read you earlier the 19th of february two days ago so it'll be tuesday all right i mean i hope i'm wrong uh, in that but who knows where were you at then i was at my mother's house you call her and ask her i was down there to sleep does she know? Did she know you were asleep at that time? Yeah. He doesn't see the interrogators as a threat, but more of an inconvenience. His responses are short and concise. He does not seek approval. He only responds to a question or states a point. I mean, did she see you sleeping at that time? Yeah, I don't ever leave. I, if I ain't doing nothing, I stay at my mother's house. If I'm not working, I'm at home. Mm -hmm. You you didn't go to labor ready that day or nothing, looking for. Like so looking for a job, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that morning, house got broken into. Okay. The detective's strategy is to reveal the charges in a periodic manner. Getting a confession to one charge at a time is far easier than gaining admission to all of them at once. Mm, the plan is to sense. reveal the break-in and robbery charge first, then reveal the assault at a later stage. The detective goes on to explain that the accuser named Candy said she saw him loitering around her house in the evening hours of the night, and a short time later witnessed him break in and steal a multitude of valuable items. The detective then explains that she picked him out of a 12-picture lineup of suspects. She says you broke in this no. apartment. Okay, well tell me why... Justin is now aware of the burglary charge, which holds a possible 20-year prison sentence due to oh previous boy. convictions. He will now begin to forcefully assert his innocence, and each time he does so, will bring, bring forward his posture and strengthen his vocal emphasis while making the assertion. All right, so I mean, she's saying that I was there before. Is that what she's saying? She's saying she's seen my face before the before the breaking happened. What if he knows her? Yep. Will they go over that? He knows this person who reported them candy or whatever? breaking her house. I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no girl named Candy. None of Okay, he doesn't. Why is she saying that you're... I don't know why she's saying she's... I don't know why I don't know. What were you doing there? I was not there. I was not... I don't know this girl Candy. The only Candy that I, I even heard of is this uh, guy I know named Tim Stahl dates her. The person he just mentioned was the accuser's ex-boyfriend. Okay. That's it. How do you know Tim Stoll? I grew up with the dude, man. The accuser's testimony was later picked apart in court. She was caught lying on the stand multiple times, mm. and Justin was exonerated. He was proven innocent not just beyond all reasonable doubt, but essentially beyond all doubt. Last thing I heard about them two, she had him arrested for domestic violence. That's all I know about this girl. He shouldn't shout? I mean, he's pissed off. He's just been... He's being wrongly accused of a crime he didn't commit. I ain't never went in that girl's house. None of that shit. I didn't so do he's, that shit. So in his mind, he's trying really hard to make his case, and he's pissed off, angry, and scared, probably. I did As God is my fucking witness, I did not do it. I used to be a piece of shit when I got out of fucking I told myself, boy, going back. 
I ain't done nothing but work my fucking ass off the entire time I've been out. Can you can you prove other than you saying you're not? Is it that that morning? What can you tell? How can you prove to me that you were at home? All you gotta do is call and ask my mother. So you're telling me? You yeah, she could just lie for you though. Yeah. Not one foot. How do you prove that otherwise, you know? I don't know. The detective then goes on Tough to reveal location. Justin is accused of assaulting the supposed victim during the robbery. You take oh, Van in here and you hit her over the head with it and you guys fight. And she got injuries. No, man. And hell no, man. Get her goddamn boyfriend, Tim Stone, in here question him about her goddamn injuries. Look at that straight right there. This sounds like it's a goddamn thing of fucking her boyfriend, Tim Stone, done fucking done something to her. And now they're trying to put it on me. That's exactly, I know that's what the fuck this is. And look, that's why we're talking to you, okay? No, this is bullshit, man, because I've tried everything in my fucking power to stay the fuck out of this goddamn fucking penitentiary shit. I did not do that shit, man. Okay. That's, that's why we're talking to you. We're here to, we're here to investigate this, okay? It's interesting how this detective, in, in this case, his behavior is entirely different from the other guy, right? This guy's saying he's open to the conversation of trying to figure out what really happened, whereas the other detective is like, we already know you're guilty. We don't even need to hear from you, you know? That's why we're asking all these questions. I'm sorry for freaking out, man, but I ain't fucking doing this shit, man. I'm fucking shaking. I ain't not fucking doing this, man. Justin had already served three years in prison for a robbery in his early 20s. Oh, yeah, he more so than it makes him a... Like the likely knew too. the reassuring tone of the investigator wasn't a good sign. Yeah. Although slightly more animated than the average person, this form of aggression is a commonplace response from the innocent being directly accused. He comes off aggressive, or but for in a guilty people manner. too. I don't think, he is right? not being hostile, but highly combative when professing his innocence. His conduct is totally justified considering the circumstance. When facing a considerable amount of time in prison for something you didn't do, this level of anger is warranted. So when compared to the forgiving composure mm. of Michael Dixon, the extraordinary nature of his behavior becomes even more pronounced. I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. No, I guess we haven't really got a. Really, a, a great amount of thought yeah. about. Yeah, it's it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an up for the discussion. That be that would make me so mad. It, it's like really that's what's that's what's. I'm sorry for keep pausing it, but that's what's doubly as amazing as this case is not only is this guy calm being faced with a charge that he know he didn't charge with a crime that he know he didn't commit. The detective is like almost being like pissy, like hey, you know. You know what? <clears throat> There's a number a number of witnesses. Great, one of whom had a video camera. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then. Well, that's right relieving. So that's I'll relieving. Be. To be quite honest. Yeah. So view the video camera. I have. Okay. That's why your guilt isn't in in an issue here. That doesn't even make sense to me, because if I'm on the video camera, that doesn't make sense. You have a video camera that shows me. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Makes perfect sense to me. Uh, we'll have to. I guess I have no choice but to get a lawyer. Then, if this is the kind of thing you're going to no, go this through is, with me, this, I mean, isn't, this isn't going to go away. You, you're, you're charged with breaking and You will be charged tonight. That. Okay. You will be going to court in the morning. Perhaps the most upsetting moment, considering the fact that we know this man is innocent, you can see the fear emerge in his eyes as he realizes he won't be going home after this interview. Uh, charged with breaking and with intent. Okay, that that's. That's what's going to happen right now. He is noticeably afraid of what lies ahead, yet reacts to the situation with reasoning and intuitiveness. Can I ask you something? Okay, are you just making this up that you have a video camera so you see how I react? Because it goes that me. if you're saying, okay, let me up for a second, please. If I am guilty, as you believe, because you had me on video camera, then okay, we'll go through the procedure. But I'm saying, I, I, you know, trying to call your bluff here because since I know I didn't do it, there's no way I can be on the video camera. Well, like I say, this isn't so, game, it's not a game of poker. Okay. Well, I've, got, I've got nothing to I'm gain from that. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, all right? You know what? I've got nothing to gain from that either way, um, which is why I'm not asking you, did you yeah, do you it? Yeah, you do. I'm not trying to catch you out. Isn't it like common practice too? Like it's, um, like cops will try to get a confession early. Right? It's like a bragging rights kind of, if you can get a confession out of somebody who's, you know, in like the first 10 minutes or something like that, that's like a badge of honor or whatever. I've got nothing to gain from that. Getting a confession yeah, void of evidence is in fact excellent for an investigator's career. It's a mark of merit and can accelerate promotion. Michael continues to profess... I'm sorry, chat. did I? 
Write this video? ...his innocence in a calm and composed manner for a further seven minutes. The detective then asks that he draw out a map and specify his movements before the arrest. Every detail of his alibi was later proven to be 100% accurate. Like I said... How much jail time does this guy get? information I've got, you, you're going to be charged tonight with breaking in. Uh -huh. However, I do have a duty to make sure that the truth uh -huh. is... Doesn't seem like he's after that. The truth is paramount. And the true the true version mm -hmm. of events of Paramount, and I have a duty um, to investigate all of this, and I will investigate. I want to know what happened to this detective I'm sure after this. I will investigate this story thoroughly, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, um, I'll be able to find something here, right. which will either prove or disprove, mm -hmm. okay. the, the you know what we've discussed tonight. Yeah. Okay. The problem is the speed at which this is going. Yeah. You know, like when I was on the ground, I think go quickly to the terminal. I have like six or so guys around me, you know, like talk to the bus driver, right. you know, like I, like I can't, I mean, I can't comment on things. That okay, I seen, know, unfortunately. But, um, but now I'm, I'm left kind of, hanging, right? Now I'm yeah. looking at this. I mean, this is the, basically on the evidence I've got, this is the only course of events that uh, can take place right now. But I, I will certainly make sure that this is looked into thoroughly. Okay, uh, great. I, I can give you my word on that. That's my duty. That's, that's what I have to okay, do. I trust you will. I was just wondering, mm. can I make a phone call? Because I'm supposed to be at work at 8 a.m. Uh, you're not going to be able to be at work at 8 a.m. I know I'm not going to be able to, but I like to phone ahead. I can arrange that uh, that you get the phone call to let someone know that you're not going to be at a place, yeah. So I'm hanging out in that room till 10? No, nope, we'll be taking you downstairs okay. uh, to uh, a larger custody facility, which you have downstairs. That's not so fun. Well, <laughs> it's not the most pleasant place in the world, but it's only for a few hours. Okay. Okay, uh, from from court tomorrow, what happens there? I don't know. Okay, well, I'm and I will look into, I will look into all I, of this. I trust you will. Yeah, you know, I trust you will. Um, you know, I want to make, make sure we got the whole picture. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. To still be so Jesus okay. Christ, okay. man. You're not in an enviable position, and uh, you know. I understand so. the like the process. I just. I'm not satisfied with it. That's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't and expect that you're going to be happy with it, you know. And I'm thinking, I uh, respect you, I but I this. know someone sitting in this chair has probably lied to you a million times, right? So I'm thinking, what can I do? To uh, convince you. I try I to try give you the information. Like, you've, you've, been, you've, you've been, you've been very good to me, and I, I try and treat everybody as an individual. Okay. And my main aim is the two things: is that you get your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, that you're you're entitled to under the Constitution of Canada, mm -hmm. and that uh, you, you treat decently, and uh, that the truth comes out. The truth eventually did come out, but the suspect wasn't treated decently. He mm -hmm. was kept in jail for three and a half days before a separate investigator looked into his alibi witnesses and checked surveillance of the area in question. He was then exonerated immediately. A civil trial ensued, and Michael was awarded $46,000 in punitive damages. Hell the interrogating yeah. officer and three other investigators were all demoted and suspended without pay. Nice. Oh yeah, that's how it should be. I'm glad. That's, that's the satisfying ending we wanted. God damn, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. One of those weird things where like, really just as, as a citizen of every country, you know what I mean? Regardless of wherever you live, you want to have faith in your justice system, but uh, stories like that are freaky, man. Oh god, that just puts a pit in your stomach. Like, if you're in this detective's shoes, though, I don't know, like, I'm glad he was demoted and everything, and I'm glad he got suspended, but in his defense, you're probably dealing with a lot of assholes every day. And more often than not, you know, it's not like they're wrong 50% of the time. More often than not, they're right. But is that good enough? I don't know. So it's just, yeah. What about lie detector? Lie detectors aren't, like, conclusive. You can't really use that as... Not anymore, I don't think. Because there are people out there who, yeah, who can cheat lie detectors, who know how to keep their heart rate down when they're asked questions, who can answer stuff very straightforward. Yeah, this was back in 03. Damn, man, that's just, yeah, that's messed up. Good video, though. Let me know if you guys want me to watch more of these, because I know this channel has a ton of these, and they've, they've started recently coming out with them, and they get ridiculous views. This was the one I watched, what pretending to be crazy looks like. That's an hour long. This one I've already seen. That's, it's a really, a good channel that puts together a lot of really interesting videos. So yeah, if there's any other of these that you guys want me to react to, let me know.